I'm pulling the meeting to order, by the way. That we nobody can ask questions, but let's keep our questions short and let's listen carefully, please. But for him talk, for I'm, Pan Am. My brain's not what it was uh, a week ago, a year ago. Now he may not be aware that we only pay, uh, we only receive four percent of. It doesn't matter. Hello. It does. It does actually matter. Okay, guys. Please enter your passcode. It very much matters as far as having okay, I'm going to ask for silence now. The difference is translated. Okay, I'm going to ask for a conversation to stop for right now, please. It doesn't specify John? that much. It huh? is in our contract. Hey guys. Okay. I'm serious. 415-352-615-352-415-3526. Please hold while I confirm your passcode. Thank you for joining Global Meet. When you hear the tone, you will be the second person to join the meeting. <laughs> Bill, are you there? I am here. This is David Moskin. Um, may I introduce the people that are up? Hi. Uh, may I introduce the people who are around the table here? Yes. And can sure. you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear? Uh, me? You're cutting in and out, David. All right. Let's see what happens. I've got a fairly new iPhone here. Maybe it's not new enough. Is that a metal box? Yeah, that makes it a little bit louder. Um, okay. Uh, we have inside. David Nixon, town administrator. Hi, Bill. Hi, David. We have Linda Castronovo, who is on the uh, advisory oversight committee for Hadley Media, the Hi, uh, the local uh, our local TV station. We have John Allen, also on the advisory committee. We have Drew Hutchinson, who is our executive director of the channel, our the head of our operations here with the TV. We have Glenn Clark, also on the advisory committee. And there's me, David Moskin, at the advisory committee. So I'm going to, uh, Linda is our school, retired school teacher. Uh, John's had an extensive career in corporate and, and the military and is a retired selectman. Drew has been working many years in media. Uh, Glenn Clark has an academic career and uh, was a selectman in Hadley. I have a bis small business career and was a selectman in Hadley. David Nixon, you know. So that's who's here now. We were hoping one or two of the active... Selectmen might be coming by, but they're not here yet. Okay. Uh, we received your list, uh, the FCC summary. And I guess, Bill, I'll turn it over to you just to talk about where you think we should uh, keep our thinking these days about the future of cable access TV here in Hadley. Well, let me start by telling you nobody knows, really, what to expect. Um, we understood were supposed to make a calculation of the new pass-through fees they think they're entitled to do to make uh, as a result of the changes in the FCC regulations. And we understood that they were supposed to send some sort of notice to the town that we intend to additionally pass through the following in-kind service fees, X, Y, and Z. Um, none of them have done that yet. And I can't get any of them to tell me whether they're going to do it or not. The only one that's been anywhere near honest is Verizon. And they've said, oh, yeah, we've been having a lot of meetings about that, and you'll hear from us. When I talk to Charter, the answer is, I don't know. And when I talk to Comcast, it's the same answer. So what do we expect in the future? Right now, nobody knows. The cable companies have not taken any real action yet as a result of the the uh, ruling, which was effective about a week ago, I think September 26, September 27, sometime around then. I'm looking at your license right now because uh, your your charter license expires in 2024. So that's about four years, maybe what's the four and a half years away. And I can tell you one strategy that you ought to be thinking about. Um, but it depends. It's going to depend on what kind of funding grants you get from them. So I'm trying to find that section. Um, yeah, franchise fees, page 28. So let me just go to that right now because that's what I want to talk about. Um, page 28. Looking at your current charter license. All right. So here's the first 
problem you've got. Your franchise should be your monthly or your annual, uh, what, I, what I would call the operations grant or your access program. That is, the annual amounts of money you get paid is 5% of gross annual revenues. Right. Okay? That's going to be a problem. Um, the other thing that, 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 that may be a problem for you is, and again, I don't, I'm trying to find your license here. Do you know whether Charter runs the town's INET or its, um, you know, its uh, closed uh, local area network, if you have one? Yes, it does. Charter does run it. All right, so, so right there are two problems you're going to have. The first problem is the 5% is a problem because that's where they're going to subtract all the new fees. So they'll charge the subscribers 5%, but they'll only pay you 3.8 or 4.1 or something like that because they get to deduct down the new in-kind cost. And again, I don't have any way of knowing what those in-kind costs will be for your town. I can tell you that they will include the following. They'll include the cost of all the free drops they make, the schools, public buildings, libraries, uh, you know, DPW, police, town hall, whatever. Those, those are the free drops and the free monthly cable subscriber service, all right? That's not peg access. That's just the cable subscriber service. I don't think those costs are going to be a great deal, to tell you the truth, but they get to pass them all through. So one thing that you should be thinking about is whether you need those things anymore or not at all. Does anybody really use subscriber service at the DPW office? Does anybody really need monthly cable TV subscriber cable service at the, you know, whatever, at schools, at the historical society? Um, so that's the first thing to start thinking about, all right? Those free drops and the free monthly service. Whatever the value is, Charter is going to deduct it from your 5% and take it back to themselves, but make the consumer pay. The second thing is that INET. And that is a, uh, that can be a substantial deduction. How many INET sites do you have within the town that are actually being used? It's typical sometimes to have an INET with six or seven different, you know, local origination points, but only two or three of them are ever actually used. We're using two. How many do you have that you have, you use and need Drew says we're using two. Okay. Two? Yes. Do you have Do you have any more than that that are really uh, kind of uh, not being used? Yes. Not, Normant. What What's not being used? Please. So, the police house fire. Yeah. I didn't know they had. Yeah, we can we can drop uh, all but the two we're using, Bill. Okay, we get your idea though. Yeah. Yeah. So I assume the two are a town hall and a studio somewhere, maybe. Um, the school and town hall. We don't have a studio. All right, but but the school is your your sort of hub, your local hub, where you probably have the equivalent of a studio, right? Um, no, the, we have uh, the hub is has we have our own um, space where the hub is, but we don't have a studio there. We just have a broadcast rack. All right. Um, in any event, the second thing for you to look at is what you can give up on the INET. All right, and is it a is it an old INET? Is it old coax or is it a newer fiber optic trunk INET? Uh, it's it's both. <laughs> um, we recently upgraded okay. our present space with fiber. Um, however, that doesn't mean that they changed the old INET. So I imagine the old INET is still coax. Well, what's, what's it, the school? You say we upgraded. It. Well, we. Well, we um, the the town paid for a small portion of the upgrade. The uh, charter handled most of it uh, because we moved into a new location per our contract. That was something that they were to provide. All right. And because this was done in the past, they can't apply it forward. No, they can't apply it forward. But what they can apply is the cost of it. It is a cost of, of maintaining repairs, it. Right. Sure. Great. Any of that. And again, I don't know how they value that or. Or, or what the calculus is to come up with a cost, but, um, but they, whatever that's going to be, they'll be, they'll be able to pass that through and uh, as a new 
in-kind cost, and they'll subtract that cost from your 5% on a quarterly basis, or maybe you just get your check annually, I don't know. So the, 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 the next thing to think about in the context of the INET is think it in terms of taking that over yourself, having the town take that over, all right? How can you do that? The answer is when it's time to negotiate a renewal license, you tell, tell Charter, we want to take this over. Um, and the, the standard way for doing that is that the cable company pays you. It's called a buyout. But the cable company wants to bail out of these costs, these annual costs. They don't want to be in that business anymore. And most cable companies, and I'm talking at least in terms of Comcast cable companies, We'll say, okay, you take over and at a certain date, and we'll pay you, you know, X amount of money. And that X amount of money is not usually a huge amount. It might be anywhere from twenty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars, but at least it's something. And so you take that money, and then you know you figure out how to pay for it and operate it on your own, and it doesn't get taken away from your annual peg access support grant. Okay, so strategically. That's maybe the second or the third thing for you to think about. Okay. Okay. Um, now, so uh, we've talked about um, the INET. We've talked about the three drops. Those are two things you can do something about. Um, you can do something about the... I'm just making my own notes here, too. Um, you can control 5%. Uh, drops and the INET. So you can make some kind of difference there strategically by strategizing and coming up with some kind of a, you know, a strategy for cable renewal that will, um, if not negate, at least minimize Charter's ability to take money away from your access payments in that 5% cap. All right. The part you can't control is the, uh, is the other thing that right now they are allowed by the FCC regulations to pass through as a new um, uh, in-kind cost. And that is what they call the transportation cost. And the transportation cost is whatever cost they say is imposed upon them to maintain the line that goes from whatever your delivery point is, your studio, your town hall, where you deliver the system, the, the signal to them, and they send it upstream over their own lines to the head end and then redistribute it back downstream to the subscribers. So there's a line somewhere that goes from the town to their head end. You know, where's Charter's head end, you know? In Chicopee. And how far away is that from, like, 20, 30 miles? town hall or where? 20, 30 miles. Okay. 20, 30 miles. All right. All right. As the crow flies. Head into yeah. All right. So uh, they're going to be passing that through to you. And, and again, I don't know how they value the operation, the, the cost to operate and maintain that line. But they've got accounting. And, you know, they've got accounting systems, and they do have costs, and they pay employees, and they purchase equipment, and so on. So there is a calculus out there some way that, where that they will apply. And, um, and, and, you know, we will find out at some point in the future how much they say that's going to cost. That is something we have no control over whatsoever. Apart from one fact, and that is if you get your annual operating grant below 5%, down to 4 or something like that, or 3.8, is probably going to be a good amount of elbow room in there so that you will get the amount of annual operating uh, access support fees that you think you're supposed to get. That is, if the license says 4%, you probably come close to getting 4%. So the question is, of course, well, what do we do about that other 1%? And the answer is, do a little bit of three-card Monty and re-scramble those numbers and call it capital. Okay? I don't know how much. How much do you get uh, in the 5% annual grant from Charter? Just so, from so, Bill, so, Bill, David Nixon here. Um, 
Can you confirm that we're getting 5%? Because my reading of the contract tells me we're getting only 4%. Well, let me get clarify. Hold, hold, hold on. Allow me to answer my, ask my own questions. Um, and the annual amount that we receive is somewhere in the neighborhood of $70,000, a little bit more than that. All right. Let me go back through the license again, David. And, and, and I read it very quickly, and I may have... 70,000, you said? 70, Sometimes they're allowed to do 5%, but they're only giving X amount. So. The, the, plus, they're giving us, uh, Bill, they're, they're also giving us 1% per capital. So, so 4 plus All right, so, 1 is 5. All right. All right. So, um, okay. Well, that's fine. Um, a license can be written, and most licenses are, well, I won't say most, but it is more typical that a license is written that has the annual grant expressed in terms of a percentage of gross annual revenues, and then the capital grant expressed in a separate section called capital grant, and it's expressed in terms of a dollar amount, like 50000 a year, or more recently, it can also be expressed in terms of a percentage of gross annual revenues, but because it's capital, it doesn't trigger the 5% cap. So you could say in your upcoming charter license, we want 4% gross annual revenues for operating costs, and then in a separate capital section, we want 1% of GAR, or maybe we want 1.5% or 2% of GAR, or something like that. Um, the idea is don't go to 5% with the annual operating grant because they're just going to take it away from you. You won't get it. Keep it at 4. Give yourself a little cushion. And we don't know at this point whether that 1% is going to be enough or not. But if, even if it's not enough, at least you have given yourself some cushion for the anticipated decline in annual grant. And then take whatever that additional amount you need for annual grant and put it over in the capital account and just call it capital. All right? Okay. When you get paid, when you get paid, you know, you get, a, a, you get paid quarterly from charter. Usually most recent licenses are quarterly. Yearly. Yeah, yearly. All right. So you get yearly amount. You get a yearly amount of 4%, and, and maybe they just give you a check for 5%. I don't know. But um, okay. when you get the money, it, it, if you've got two separate provisions in the license, one for annual operating grant, the other for capital, you'll end up getting two checks, and then you put them in the same bank account, all right? Or nowadays, you have to uh, you have to put it into a, a, a municipal fund, and then it gets appropriated, all right? And... Although, technically, you're not supposed to mix operating funds with capital funds, everybody does it, and a cable company is never going to know whether that money that you call capital is really going to capital or not. All right? You can put it in a reserve fund and end up spending it however you want for a rainy day purpose. So the strategy that, that is at least somewhat clear at this point is keep the annual operating expenses below 5%, and whatever more you need on an annual basis, just kick that over and call it capital, all right? And ask for capital. Add that to what your capital uh, request is going to be. And that's really the most I can tell you right now about, about how to think about what's coming. The, the bad news is that the cable companies are claiming, and it, not the cable companies, but the access, the Massachusetts Access Corporation, I can't remember the, what the... Mass Access. Mass Access or something like that. Yeah. It's putting the word out that, that the cable companies and the FCC, you know, something's cooking now, percolating again. They're going to figure out a way to value the channels that you have. And when they do that, that's going to be a, you know, that's going to be an, probably a lot of money. And, and that'll be a, a major... Uh, that will represent a major decline in uh, access support payments to communities because those channels will undoubtedly be valued at a very high amount, even though 
they've got lots of excess carrying capacity, and the true value of excess capacity that's not used might be zero. But you know the cable companies are not going to say that, and their buddies on the FCC, all the pro-industry guys that are on the FCC, are not going to say it either. So, so you're saying I don't know how long. I don't know how long it's going to be before that comes down, but we are being told that's going to happen. So I want to make so sure, another, Bill. I'm sorry to interrupt. But I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. The value to, uh, in our case, charter will be very high for any channel, or they're going to charge us. Is, so do you consider our channels, so we have three channels, one of which we don't really use, that might have good value to us, or, there, or we're going to be, we should anticipate being charged for that. You should anticipate being charged for it. Okay. How yeah, will they value that? To the in-kind use, the in-kind they in-kind cost, that they are being required by the license. So it's, a li- it's like a liability more than channels, a... And, and those three channels that they're setting, required to set aside have a value, and now they get to pass that value through. And we don't know what that value is going to be. The reason it wasn't done in the September 26th to 27th uh, FCC order was because nobody could agree on how to value those channels, even though they tried to do it for two years. So even though those so, channels uh, well, even though those channels might be considered assets, they should be on the liability side of our, of our balance sheet? The new thing. Right. We're going to be. Have to ask your at that point. Well, I mean, we're going to be can't, charged. I can't tell you what side of the balance sheet they go on. Right now, they don't go anywhere because they're not a liability. Right. Um, but if it, if the FCC says, okay, cable companies, you can now declare a value for each one of those access channels and pass that through as an in-kind cost. Let's right. Say it's a hundred thousand dollar panel. You know, then they're, they're going to take $100,000 away from you, or $300,000. they are going to take it away from you. No, we don't have so time however time. that's expressed in accounting terms, I think that's what you have to prepare for. But, but, but they're not going to buy they're not going to buy a channel back for $100,000. Good question. I don't understand. Right. So you're saying that Charter values, one of, let's say, for example, Charter values a channel off at $100,000 and wants to charge us $100,000 if we, if we want to keep the channel. Does that mean they'll also buy it back for a, a substantial amount of money, close to $100,000? Is it like a car, you know, where if you want to keep it, you pay, or yeah, if they want to... Question. We have that's two a good decide. question, and that's anybody's guess. <laughs> I, I sincerely doubt it. But, but I again, we're in the realm of total speculation. Okay. Bill, may I, I'm asking, this is still David Moskin talking. Uh, is there litigation to try to uh, shut down the FCC decision? Reverse it. I understand. I understand that there was supposed to be litigation uh, started somewhere on the West Coast around the time the FCC order became active. I've also been told that we that the lawyers who are sort of marshalling that litigation on a national scale. And there's an organization in Washington that kind of represents national, a national organization representing access organizations and, and corporations. ACM. The word they are saying is, don't expect a stay or an injunction. Because the, one of the legal standards that you have to show to get an injunction is irreparable harm. That is, it'll be a disaster for us. It will be irreparable if you don't stop this immediately. And the lawyers who are orchestrating the national uh, opposition, legal opposition to this, are saying, we don't think we can prove that. So they don't think they're going to get a stay or an injunction. Okay. So without that, litigation doesn't matter because the, the rule goes into effect. The cable companies will act on it. The cable companies will be doing their calculations and they'll be we hope, informing the town beforehand how much additional pass-through costs they intend to take back, and 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 then they're going to go through with it. And if there's no stay or injunction, there's nothing to stop them. Maybe three years down the road, a court will say, all right, you can't do that, and the towns get to claim back all that money, but that won't help us now. Interesting. So just for so my... 
Go ahead. Yeah, what I was going to say was, one of the other things you should be thinking of in terms of defending and protecting your access program as best you can now is how you would amend your current license with Comcast to minimize the anticipated additional cost. All right? So you could minimize it. You could change the license and the way we were discussed earlier, and that is uh, you uh, give up um, the, you give up the, the drops and you take over the INET and maybe you give up one of your channels. If you're not using a third access channel, then you agree to give it up. All right, and write something into the license that says if we if we can fill it up, you know, twenty four seven for six days a week, then you give it back to us. But until then, you keep it. All right. So um, the the concept that we understood, that is, lawyers understood, would be the process was supposed to have been once the rule goes into effect, the cable companies. Do their calculations and they tell you, here's what it's going to cost. And then the municipality, the license granting organization, is supposed to have four months to amend the license. And those amendments will be negotiated. They're not unilateral. You have to sit down and negotiate with them to amend the license. That was the process we thought was supposed to have um, been intended by the FCC. We are told that the cable companies may or may not intend to do it that way, and, and as yet, nobody knows. But that doesn't mean that if you get a bill from Charter in a month's time that says we're going to subtract another $4,000 or 5000 or ten or fifty from your PEG access grant, that doesn't mean you can't send them a letter, a vote of the Board of Selectmen saying we want to amend the license. And you can't. You can. You can always begin a license amendment procedure. All right. So. So we don't have to wait till 2024 for that. Well, we might you can do it any time, um, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that unless you know that it's going to be a really um, adverse impact on your annual peg access fees. If it's going to be minimal, you know. Um, right. I can't remember what. What you told me the annual grant or the five percent grant was, David? How much was that? It was about seventy-two thousand dollars. All right. So let's just say hypothetically that Charter does their little calculations and they say, all right, it's going to cost you, uh, you know, five thousand dollars. So from you go from seventy-two down to sixty-eight. Uh, you know, you may or may not want to amend your license at this point. I don't know. That's a judgment call that. You know, that you'll all have to kind of confer together and, and make. Um, but on the other hand, if they say, well, it's going to cost you, you know, uh, 20000 you go from 72 to 52 or 25 go to 47 then you are probably going to want to look at your license and figure out how to amend it to reclaim as much of that as you can. Okay. So... Okay. So as far as you know, Bill, there's no big activity happening in other towns. Nobody's jumping up and down. Everybody's sort of hanging tight, waiting for the cable companies to show their intentions. That's right. I mean, everybody's jumping up and down, but nothing's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're all, everybody's Anything got else? all the same questions. All and, right. Yeah. You know, we don't have many answers about the, the, the stark reality is we... After all this time, we still don't have many answers. Um, but we do have some preliminary thoughts, and that's kind of what I've been giving you. Thank you. Linda, I'm think about it. We're gonna, if you don't mind taking a couple of questions, Linda's going to go first. Thank you. I just have a question. Do you, is there any sense that the three big cable companies will be in any kind of competition now to uh, charge lower in-kind costs to get more contracts? Like, Hadley, in 2024, Hadley doesn't have to be with Charter, right? If Comcast will uh, give us a better deal, I, or... No? No, no sense of that at all, Linda. It's possible, but I haven't heard of it. I haven't even heard any rumors to that effect. And I have another um, question about so, your, yeah. your advice about um, only going for the 4%, 
and asking for the other 1% as, as um, capital, won't they just subtract their in-kind costs from whatever annual percent we start with? No. So, no. Because by law they're allowed. No. Okay. Please. No, they, would, they, they, they have to add it on until they get the 5%, okay? So, for example, you still there? Yep, yep. I'm listening. Okay. So, for example, if, um, if you're at 4% and, uh, let's see, you're getting $72,000, so uh, whatever that is, divided by 4, I don't know, 18000 or something like that. If they come up with another $18,000, in new in-kind costs that they can pass through, they have to add that on to the seventy-two thousand dollars until they get up to five percent. Okay, I see. And so you'll get your seventy-two thousand as long as their add-on doesn't go over five percent. If it goes over five percent, then that amount starts to be subtracted from your seventy-two. Okay. Yep. So they, they are. That's a that's a a, an, a license requirement. And it is part of the fee that they, they get to pass through. So that's capped by law at 5%. But they have to add it on to what you're getting until they get to 5%. Now, if you put that over to capital, they can't take anything away from capital. The law is very clear. Capital is not capped. All right? You can negotiate for as much capital as you want. There's no cap on it. You can negotiate as much as you want. You can't get as much as you want, but you can negotiate for it and there's no cap. So whatever you can legitimately and honestly remove from annual grant classification and transfer over and call it capital, that is free and clear. That's not going to be subtracted by any in-kind cost. Thank you. Do you David, anything? Yeah. Bill, thank you very much. It's very helpful. I appreciate your knowledge on this, and I also appreciate that we're in a situation where nobody knows quite how things are going to be shaping up. <coughs> so, yeah, um, you're, you're right. I, I think you're in a good position to tell you the truth, because I say that because your license is up in three or four years. Um, if your license were up next month, you know, then we'd really be in a quandary. We wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. It's good that it's good that you can you're in a position to kind of let the dust settle and see how things are going to work out, how they're going to pan out, how they're going to play out. It may well be that it's not quite as bad as it's not going to be quite as bad as everybody thinks, you know. Uh, but it's good to have some time to wait and see how it's all going to play out before you figure out what you want to do. So I think you have time to do that. Um, <coughs> You know, I think you, and, and there may be an argument to be made in Hadley's case that you're getting 4% DAR annually as operating grant, so they've got to add their new in-kind pass-through cost to that 4%. Your 1% capital doesn't count. That's capital, and they can't touch that. So that's the argument that can be made, and... You know, it, I'll be interested to find out what the cable companies end up doing as far as disclosing to the towns what they're going to do. Are they going to give it to the accounting? Are they going to say right up front, okay, Hadley, we are now going to take an additional $15,000 away from you. We're going to add it on to your 72 till we get up to 15. So you'll get your 72. We just pass through more to the customers. And your 1% capital is safe? Or are they going to try and lump the 1% together with the 4? You know, what are they going to do? Um, I'll be interested to see how they handle this kind of a situation like that. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll, we'll all await with interest to see what they do. So, so Bill, David Nixon again here. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I was going to ask the advisory committee to uh, start some strategic planning for the, the next fiscal year, which I'm already working on. Um, and I was going to ask them to start worth thinking about the ascertainment process. Uh, I was thinking about the completion of the building projects that we're doing here. 
uh, thinking about the long-term solvency of the Enterprise Fund for the Hadley Media. Um, it sounds like we should have that conversation um, and um, the sooner the better, um, but there's no, there's no panic here so far as I can tell. Did you have a question? Or is that a question? I just want to make sure that if I've, if I've asked the committee to do something that I'm not wasting time or taking us in a direction that we shouldn't be going. That's the question. Am I on the right track here? That's the basic question. Right. Now, David, I think you are. And um, I think that it's, it's always going to benefit you to know what it is you will want and need for the next license term. The sooner, the better. Because that way, you will be able to have an immediate appreciation for the long-term impact of whatever they decide to do. So, for example, if you determine that for the next 10 years after 20, uh, was it 2024, I guess, right? Yeah. 2024 to 2034, God, imagine that. <laughs> um, you know, you're going to need, ten, ten years? Uh, instead of $72,000 a year, you're going to need 90000 a year, all right? So you, you know that you need that money, and you're going to need X amount of capital, another 1%. You know, you will be in a, in a really, in, in the best possible position if you know exactly what you need when you get that letter from Charter saying, here's what we're going to do to you, okay? You know right away how that's going to impact you and and whether your calculations are, you know, are, are helpful or whether you need to go back and redo the math. So I would say you're absolutely right. Get going. Make your, conduct your asset, an ascertainment now, a mini ascertainment now. You don't need to do it until three years away, which is 2021, but... This is going to have an immediate impact on you whenever it happens. And so it will be good for you to know what exactly that impact will be. All right. Good, we will do that. Uh, Bill, are you working with any towns that have taken over and done their own uh, municipal internet? Uh, what do you call that? Municipal light plant in order to yeah, provide uh, internet service. We're here in Greenfield and, and South Hadley maybe. Leverett. Are moving away from cable trying to do their own uh, access to television themselves through the internet by uh, contracting with, um, you know, NBC online, ESPN online, and the municipality sets up the infrastructure to provide television cable type service to their municipality, to their people. Are you working with any towns that are doing that? Not yet, no. Okay. So we're just starting to look at these models around us of towns that are trying to do it themselves and go bypass the cable companies. You know, we hear some rumors that the cable companies are not making money and may be gone before long, so we don't know what to think. Well, my opinion is you don't have Verizon. Um, and I've never had a high opinion of Charter. Comcast is going to be around. Uh -huh. uh, they seem to be saying, all right, we're a cable company, you know, we're going to we're going to last it out. We're going to stay in as long as we can. We also sell internet broadband, but, you know, we're still going to be a cable company. We still make money on licenses. We're still going to, still going to play ball. Um, Verizon is telegraphing a message to its towns that, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. It's a pain. We don't like it. And we're going to get out. Oh, I and then know. we're just going to dumb our notes at you and, and not renew the licenses. And it's goodbye and good riddance. You know, that's the message we're getting from Verizon. So they'll be gone, I think, in three or four years. They'll be out of the business as a player. I don't know about Charter. I don't have much of a sense of what their corporate mentality or their corporate culture is dictating them to do. Um, I've never thought very highly of them. I've always thought they were a, a pretty, you know, of the major cable companies, I've always thought they were the, the least well-run and the least reliable but they certainly have improved a lot in the last few years. And so I don't know what to think about Charter. I don't know whether they want to stay in or not. Okay. Anyway, that's about all I can tell you about corporate cultures. Okay. Hey, thank you very much, Bill. There are no other questions. I guess we'll sign off. So, you know, we're a bunch of volunteers here other than David struggling to, uh, to make it all work. Uh, we lost a third of our operating budget last year just because of budget pressures in the town of Hadley. So our overhead charges were much, much higher than they have been. We're trying to work on that with David Nixon and, and the, the select board to get our money back. 
Yeah. Uh, we definitely want to work on this uh, ascertainment survey and long-term long -term planning to prepare for the contract negotiation. So uh, I hope we're all on the same page. But right now we're cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, and we don't, we don't think that's good for the no. town. So, hey, look, thank you, man. Thank you very, very much. Any other questions? Anybody? You're most welcome. Uh, good, good luck to all of you. Um, and let me know if there's any further help I can give you. And I certainly will be interested to hear if you hear from Charter what they're going to do. And Bill, when's the last time you were in Western Massachusetts? Pardon me? When's the last time you were in Western Massachusetts? Oh, sometime last spring. Okay. I went to Lanesboro. Lanesboro? Uh, no, no. Year, so. <laughs> so you're overdue, man. You're overdue. We want you to visit. Come come look at the beautiful Pioneer Valley. All right. All right. I was in, uh, where was it that I, I went to just before it was December? Uh, I'm trying to think. That might have been Lanesboro. It might have been Lanesboro. I was driving on to, you know, raining like hell out the mass pipe. Yeah. And I was going up to Lanesboro, and I crossed the line, and it became snow. Yes. <laughs> Once you go up over the hills towards the Berkshires, yeah, it gets a whole other uh, environment there. Okay, look, we're going to sign off. Thank you very, very much. Okay. All right, take care. All right. Thank yep. you, Bill. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remind them they were friendly. Well, Thank you for coming, Linda. My stomach's not good. I'm not going to hang out either. David, I think we have... I have a couple of questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to... Next meeting, you'd like to come in and talk about... Progressing with the ascertainment survey and yeah, all that? Yeah, so I, I, I proposed six points, and then obviously some of this has to be rethought given what we've learned from Bill Hewitt, but okay. I, I suggested that we cover six points in the next committee meeting. Um, not that we're going to complete all of this in one meeting, but we can at least begin pushing things in the right direction, yes. steering the Queen Mary and right. the way that it needs to go. Okay, now look, let's speak honestly here. We're all worried about the budget, and uh, you've given some reassurance, at least intention-wise, of restoring uh, some of the money or all the money that we yeah, lost. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that right. I wanted to talk so, about. So should we relax about this way? I'm going to ask it, John. I'll give you your chance in just a second. I think everybody says about it. Okay, so you know, we're thinking about a working committee to try to show that... Um, the overhead charges uh, might, might be re-examined and stuff like that. Maybe we don't need to worry about all that if, if the budget's strong enough now to uh, get our, our uh, operating money back. So I, I don't know if you have a different way of saying it. I don't want to fight here. I just want to say, like, well, you two, had good news two, for me a couple two, of times. Two things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, so the select board are meeting on this Wednesday, and one of the things we're going to start talking about is the FY 2021 budget and the administrative charges is something that they're going to talk about. So okay. probably going to be referred to the financial management team uh, and uh, for their review and analysis. So that's, that ball will start rolling. So are you still hopeful um, that we'll, I sat a couple times with you in the last few months and you sounded hopeful that the financial situation was better or something and that uh, the uh, having media budget could be restored. Is that well, I, I, I know you don't make the foul. Wait, are you talking about this fiscal year, David? I'm talking about the budget. Well, not, the bu not the fiscal year we're in, but the budgeting for the next fiscal year. So we, we just started one fiscal restored year. Restored for the next fiscal year. Yeah, and or restored. for this, we'll ask, which, which, which are you asking, that's not, David? That's a good question. Both, I guess. Yeah. So I'm preparing right now in the month of October is when I start working on the FY 2021 budget. All right. So I want to start thinking about strategy and where do we need to go. Now, the select board has set up a funding priority by fiscal year. So it was public safety, public works. Um, so have the media. Town <laughs> government, uh, the 100 level budgets. And then in FY 2024, they were going to give priority to the cultural and recreation and human services, and you fall under human services. Uh -huh. All right. Based upon what I'm hearing is that we may want to accelerate that. We may want to move Hadley Media away from its current financial position, which is that of a, an enterprise fund. Um, that may not be sustainable in the long run. Um, so it may be that we change it over to a special revenue account funded through the enterprise fund, uh, through the general fund, um, or some sort of other kind of arrangement. Okay. All right, so 
we need to start thinking about that. It may be that these events are going to propel us to take this action prior to FY 2024 when the select board figured that they would okay. give you so short term, in terms of can we just talk short term because we have to talk about budgeting f for these next months. If, mm -hmm. if we're not going to get some of our money back for this year, this year we're in, and it looks maybe it's too certain to talk about next fiscal year because of all the no, that's what I'm saying. Is we need to t start talking about this coming fiscal year now. But the fiscal year we're in, there was some discussion last spring that some of the money might come back, even though it was taken out back last spring. So if it's not coming back, we need to know that, because we probably need to adjust our operating budget, cut hours and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Do you have, or shouldn't I ask you this way? Maybe it's not. No, right. this is the time to ask it. This okay. Is... So last spring, we sat, Molly was there, finance committee lady, what's her name, Amy was there. And it was like, look, there's not enough time before a town meeting to talk about revising everything, so we are going to take the, the larger amount of overhead. But there's hope that we could return some of it. And correct me if I'm remembering this wrong. So during this fiscal year, some of that money would not be taken, and that we could hang no, it No, that, that isn't what they said. Oh, or help what, me. What she said was that we would bring it up in the summer. Okay. And nothing happened in the summer. Okay. So, so what I'm referring to is the conversation you said you had with David about restoring the current fiscal year's budget. Now, I may have misunderstood you. Yes, so I, so because, I heard. I because think of I heard. the ambulance service and because of the b b The better. lending rate being better, our, our bound rating and all that stuff, there was some hope of restoring our Yeah, rate. so I can't, I can't promise anything right now. I'm still okay. waiting for the free cash and enterprise fund balances. That number I'm... Had expected to have at the beginning, okay. of the beginning of September, and I'm still waiting for it. Um, so okay. without those numbers in place, I'm, I'm, my hands are tied. Uh, so we would your may advice have, be to start cutting because we lost a third of our money. So we, that means we well, have to cut a third of our. Don't operating. don't start cutting. Um, that's <laughs> it's entirely too early to be talking about that. Any kind of staff reduction in terms of hours or positions needs to go to the select board because they're ultimately responsible for that. Of course. Um, we don't so. want to wait till we're out of money, though. You know, it's, come, yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. Come April we're, or May. We're running in the red by the month. And, and on an annual basis, we're running in the red $8,000. So you know, divide that by 12. Should we? And waiting uh, is just going to aggravate the situation. Should, would so, you suggest we send a, a letter to the select board wondering like how we should adjust or when we should adjust our expenditures or expenditures to meet the well you're in, a, you're in a difficult situation because yeah. your, your, your <laughs> revenue looks like a hockey stick all right you've got almost nothing from July 1st until middle of June and middle of June your revenues go up like that because you get that one but we, we deal with an annual budget it doesn't matter what uh, the, actual the, in, the, in the meantime your expenses don't stop right so if you were to look at the gap between revenues for 11 months and and expenditures you're going to see a big gap between those and hopefully that hockey stick part means it goes higher than your total expenditures so one of the things so one of the things that I would look for in a new contract would be payment on a monthly or quarterly basis rather than the annual payment. Okay. okay. So you, cause you're, we're running, all accounts. you're running into the risk of a late payment. All right. So from charging. From charging. So, right. So for example. That's what we maintain reserves for, David. I'm just worried. So we work with an annual budget. You know, we're just the volunteers here. So right, when the money so, comes in, it's not our business. All right. So... Your FY19 payment came on June 18th. Okay. That was less than right. about 20 days left to go. Those were less than 20 days to go in the fiscal year. So if that thing had been delayed by two weeks, you would have had no revenue coming in an FY19. Now your revenue for 20 would look great because you get two payments. But in a new contract, we should be thinking about getting that money in sooner than what we have right now. Okay, that issue is so for you far, and your accounting team. <coughs> so far, this has all worked out. You're getting your money, you're getting it in the nick of time, but it makes me nervous 
to run an enterprise fund where okay. you're in the red okay. 11 so I'm gonna repeat months of the year. I hear you and I like what you're saying. I agree with you. <clears throat> However, this is an accounting and bookkeeping issue of when the actual revenue comes in. We, as an oversight committee appointed by the select board, are asked by you to make a budget. So we make a budget for the year. When the money comes in and goes out, really, I don't know when, when Drew gets his paychecks and when the money comes from Charter. So we're just concerned with that big one single annual figure that we should be working with. And if we need to keep working with the current figure for this fiscal year, we can do that. We will have to do that. If you said, no, there's hope that some of that money will come back to you this fiscal year, that would be good news, and we should pursue that discussion. Yeah. If you tell me, sorry, Moscow, you know, things are not really better as far as the having me go. How would you say it? I'd love to get an to... answer. Is it going okay. to come back or not? Well, it's like I said, I don't have the free cash figure or the enterprise fund balances, so I can't answer that question right now. I it depends one. on free cash? And it may not be your decision, right? Enterprise fund balances and free cash. No, this has to do with what you're charging us, David. It's not a cash issue. It's a what you're charging the town. us. What the town. What is being transferred from the enterprise fund to the general fund? That's the issue. Yeah. So what is that, $21,000 or something like that? $8,000. We're $8,000 in the red. I reviewed your your well budget just a couple of days ago. I didn't see that eight thousand. Well, it You're isn't in the budget. It, <laughs> our income is about seventy thousand. I'm using round numbers here. Okay. Yeah. We pay Drew roughly thirty-eight thousand dollars. We pay John about eighteen thousand dollars. Okay. So that's uh, 40, 56. That leaves us with 14,000 from the 14, gross amount. Right. And we have how much? And we have $22,000 worth of expenses, both to the town and legitimate enterprise fund expenses, direct costs. Okay. We have a total of $22,000. Let's do the subtraction, it comes up to $8,000 in the red. So that's what we're worried about. It's like, when do we start reducing our expenses so that at the end of the year we're not $8,000 no, in the rent? Without, without that fund balance information, I, I just can't say. I mean, it obviously... It's a fund balance uh, issue, David. So, so, I mean, obviously we're not going to let you guys wither on the vine. We're going to support um, Hadley how, Media. How can we help and Hadley Media get their money back? I mean, is that one way of putting it? It's not on you, I realize that. You're in the hot seat, but... Uh, we're trying to see if we can't retrieve some of that overhead that was taken away. Would you say it's worth the shot? Well, I think, I think, I think, you know, we need to take a look at the enterprise fund balances, to find out where we are. I think that there's sufficient to get through FY20, which is what the fiscal year that we're in right now. I don't see any real trouble there. Uh, we have talked for a long time about the, the enterprise fund continues to serve Hadley Media well. I appreciate well. that, yeah. And in the information that I sent you about what we should be talking about, the six points for the strategic plan yeah. for FY21, yeah, all good stuff. one of the things that I talk about is, okay, so how do we move Hadley Media out of the enterprise fund model? Because you've got a solvency issue. Yeah. Long-term solvency. I don't see a. I don't see us hitting the wall. All good this stuff year to talk about. Next. Yep, all good stuff to talk about. Yeah. But, but I'm wondering so. whether we should start thinking about reducing hours here, so that we don't end up at the end of this fiscal year, way in the red, or if it's okay to be in the red. Maybe all. I don't. It, it I, don't I never followed the town budget. It, it, it's not okay to be in the red. We're eight grand underwater. So the municipal accounting world is a strange world, right? Everybody operates. D in the David, red. listen. Yeah. You you went to the, the Wharton School. You understand what I'm saying. I know you uh, do. Yeah, but the work school versus reality he's, what he might be seems very different to be saying is we've got enough reserves to cover the eight grand. No, he said we're not. We're not in trouble. Yes. That doesn't mean you're not going to cut a thing. So, uh, yeah, I misunderstood <laughs> you. But I mean, let's work it out. Yeah. So I don't know what that fund balance is. Um, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand um, dollars. Can you use that? What fund is this? I'm sorry, I'm getting thick here. All right, so you've got a reserve fund. You mean the Hadley, the Hadley Media Reserve Hadley Fund? Hadley Media oh, Reserve Oh, yes, that I know. Okay. 
you know, so it's the way that we pay the bills during this 11 and a half months when you have no income coming in whatsoever. Right, right, right. All right, so we want to make sure that we keep that reserve fund up to a certain level. Yes. All right. We all recognize that cable TV is a dynamic industry. <clears throat> Some of the regulatory stuff that's coming down is unhelpful, to say the least. Yeah. All right. We know that we can't keep this enterprise fund going forever as a self-supported enterprise fund, that we're going to have to reshape it. And that was one of the things I wanted us to talk about is how fast does that happen? Yeah. Where do we go with Hadley Media? Um, and how do we how do we do it in such a way that it okay. uh, is Let's the most phys physically responsible? Right. Okay. So you were yeah. expecting to talk about that today? No, I, I'm not expecting. No, because it's I'm not. It's a, a question. So it's not on your agenda of today. So right. I want to have an agenda that has these six points so that we can talk about it. And not that we're going to solve it in one meeting, but we can at least start putting a okay. shape around it. Right. Okay, now I'd like I, to interrupt to ask uh, about that next meeting, because I, I want to beat the horse the dead or beat the horse at that meeting, not, not today. Oh, much of course. So I don't Just wanna... asking if that's what he wanted us to yes. talk so, about. Yes, uh, so you'd like to come to a next meeting of Hadley Media. We're going to move, move back to Wednesdays because of Linda's availability. Mm -hmm. When would you guys like to schedule the next meeting? Uh, this coming Wednesday is too soon. Yeah. So how about next week? Are you here next week, Wednesday? Next Wednesday. Next That's the fifteenth, I believe. We have to make sure this is available. It's the, is that the next Wednesday is the seventeenth, I think. Uh, we got a groundbreaking for the library at eleven. If, you can, if you're not over it, you can. Uh, I'm actually a luddite. <laughs> Oh yeah, we have the groundbreaking for the uh, library. Yeah, at eleven o'clock. Yeah, eleven o'clock. Yeah, because we're filming that. Did you film the stagecoach? Unfortunately, I didn't even know anything about a stagecoach. Every year. Yes, we can meet next Wednesday, but not in this room. There's another room at the okay. end of the hall. So there's a groundbreaking at 11 o'clock for the library on, on that. Uh, I'm a trustee, and I don't even hear about that. <laughs> Should I take that personally? I was going to say, I, I put it, it on TV. Like, I don't watch TV. I no, you shouldn't take it personally, but I got a written invitation. I did too, then. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's in your message today. <laughs> I, think, I think somebody saw me carrying entirely too many boxes oh, and briefcases. Oh, oh. And, so yeah, we're, I'm going to post for 12.30, October 15th. I hope I have the right date. No, it's not the right date. 16th. 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 Okay, thank you, David. It's, it's not, hey, it's close enough, right? I'll, I'll sit with you before the meeting no, so we have a, an agenda that meets everybody's satisfaction. Right, so if you're going to do that, you need to post on Friday the 11th because Monday is Absolutely. the holiday. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I can't stay, guys, because of my stomach. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm uh, uncomfortable. I've got one yes. more question. Yes. In our... Uh, Does he need to be here for that question? He, he, he well, can, I'd like to be here until we adjourn. Just, just Shall squeeze, adjourn? Squeeze. Should we adjourn? I, I don't care. No, okay, go ahead. What's your question? Um, on us. In all our uh, meanderings over the last three years, uh, we've uh, talked to dozens of uh, cable access TV stations, and there is only one that has an employee that is uh, paid by the town or is it, I should say, is a town employee. And that person is a part-time employee. When you talk, it sounds to me like you're thinking that this the should be a smoke. department of the town. On the left. I got it, got it. Well, that's what we're talking about. We, need we to are explore. a department of the town. You are a department of the, you're, you're absolutely right, you are a department of the okay. town. Now, um, what your future is going to be like is, uh, could be continuing as part department of the town, or if you wanted to go to some other model, we need to explore what that okay. looks like. Now, how would we get to that discussion? Because most towns that we've contacted, and this is three years worth of work, uh, have contracted it out, and they go out to bid every three years to let the service provider bid on the, on the job of covering governmental meetings. Is that something that 
would be beneficial. I mean, it's obviously beneficial to the, to the towns who've chosen that route. Does is that something we could the town would have they would like to consider? Well, it depends. What does it look like? I mean, show us the numbers. You know, is this a savings or is it uh, going to be more cost, less control? It would be less cost. Yeah, I mean, I show us the numbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there an RFP? I mean, we're, we're Tell you what, can you, can you send me a draft RFP that some other town has used? You can but, get it from your town administrator. Um, yeah, and I'm asking you. So, if you would be so kind as to provide me with sure. a, a sample that you think is particularly um, I'll, I'll, I'll effective. Pick, I'll, I'll provide you with a sample. I'm not going to, I haven't done all the review of all the RFPs, but I'll get you one if that's what you yeah. want. We're not ready to put on an RFP. No, we're not. No, I agree with that. We're, we're simply not ready to So, what do you want an RFP for? I mean, I'll put All right, that. so. So the idea of outsourcing this service um, is interesting. It's something that the state likes to see. Um, what does it look like? How do you operationalize it? What are the what are the costs? What are the benefits? What are the revenues? What are the problems? What are the successes? What's the quality of the service? All these things we have to take a look at. Um, and if it's faster, better, cheaper, um, then why wouldn't we consider doing it? If it's not all of those things, then maybe we don't want to do that, maybe we do. It depends on what the alternatives are. Okay. All right. Okay. Understood. Yeah. The reason it works, just simply stated, the reason it works is, is that towns can take advantage of the economies of scale uh, for example, there's one outfit that handles what five towns, four towns, four towns, four frontier. Towns. frontier. So one director covers four towns. Yeah, so that's FCAT, that's Chris yep. Collins, right? Isn't yep. It? Yeah. Okay. And Amherst has come to me and said, "We'll gladly take over Hadley Media." Um, I don't know what that looks like. I don't that, know if that's that's a good not idea. what they tell us. No, that's what a guy in the party came to see me and said. You know. When recently? couple of years back. Well, no, well, okay. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, we'll do that then. Well, we, the committee will come and up Maybe with we can do this as an E&R grant. What's uh, an E&R? Uh, through the Community Compact uh, Program, there's efficiency and regionalization grants. We're not eligible to participate this fiscal year, but next fiscal year we will be. And I intend to submit a grant application. Maybe that's one of the things that we okay. ask for. I think, or I think, better yet, is that we do a DLTA grant through PVPC. And I'm sorry to give you a whole bunch of help with that soup here. It's, it's all good. Direct technical local assistance through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, for regional approach to uh, 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 cable access uh, stations. Um, so they do all the work, they've got the expertise, and then they look at regional models, and there's a report that's generated that you can implement. So, and I think those DLTA grant applications are due in sometime this spring or late, late winter, something like that. Okay. One of the things that I'm very sensitive to is the fact that um, uh, people in Hadley tend to look at Hadley Media as it is today in uh, with the perspective of what HPAT used to be, and today, the, it seems to me that the selectmen need to decide whether they want to put out the governmental meetings on and make it available on the uh, basically the internet, because the commercial media, the newspapers, two newspapers, and WHMP. They rely on Hadley Media's online uh, presentation of these meetings to get their data to put in the newspaper. They're not sending reporters to the meetings anymore. Mm -hmm. And so the selectmen need to sort of be thinking about how important is it for the, that, that the town to 
publicize the to make these meetings available because if it's important to them then they ought to contribute uh, to make it possible to the extent the cost is in excess of the fees that the cable company generates does that make any sense well i know that you post to youtube because i go to youtube yeah. and watch the, the meetings all the time and i know that you have your own website um, and I know that you do live broadcasts, and Scott Merzbach usually calls me the next day after a select board meeting and says, oh, tell me all about fill in the blank there. You're talking about something above and beyond all of that. No, I'm talking about how do you want to maintain it. If the revenues from charter aren't sufficient, does the town want to subsidize this thing? For the purpose of getting to the public, what they do, what the town is doing, at its public meeting. Yeah, I mean that's that that would be the agenda item for the next meeting, which is planning for the future in terms of the long-term uh, funding mechanisms for Hadley Media. Okay. All right, and okay. you know I'm I'm completely aware that the enterprise fund model is going to serve us only for so long and no longer. So we need to think about transition, and that's going to take time and planning to do. So that's the kind of conversation I want to have with you all. Where do we go from here? General fund, special revenue fund, outside no, agency? No, it's not with us. You need to have this. this <laughs> excuse me, but I think that this, the discussion has to be with the selectmen. What did they want? That's right. Did they want to just contract out the service to get the stuff out to the public of what they're doing, or did they want to, um, and if so, do, do they want to subsidize it? If the answer to that is yes, we want to get it out to the public, then we can determine which is the least expensive of several alternatives. But what do they want to do here? They've sort of, it's been taken for granted, um, and, and the, those days are gone. The, the information to the public is what, what, what we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. we, we had the cops in here, and they talked to us about how many people um, access the information they put up every day. It happens to be on Facebook, but it's, it's pertinent, it's current, it's timely uh, for the people who are accessing it. And um, it's a totally different orientation. By the way, we're, we're working on five PSAs with the police department. Right that, now. That's fine. This is that's good. Okay. That's fine, and I'm glad we are. So I'd like to have a strategic discussions. I don't want to keep you here longer than you wanted to be here. Yeah, uh, I have to, have to put the so accountant back in the stable. These order. are all good things. Can we the bring them up? I have to put the accountant into the stable orbit of some kind. Don't so, worry so, about it. No, no I understand it, that we're going to lose the accountant at the end of the year. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've made a public announcement that they're shutting their doors uh, December so 29th. The accounting company we use is closing mm -hmm. up? Yeah. Oh. So, so what are our towns doing? Uh, well, I've had conversations with Franklin Regional Council of Governments. I'm going to have a town conversation with Hatfield in the next half an hour. I'm going to be reaching out to Warwick. Um, and uh, there are five or six companies in the region that do this kind of work. So I'll be talking to them as well. So, so you just go out to bid? Go out to bid. Your, the CPA your functions are not um, subject to bidding, but it may be worth our while to go out to bid. Uh, I've got a model bid that we can use for that. Um, but yeah, we need to we need to put that back into some sort of stable orbit. One of the things that uh, Justin's uh, uh, scheme was uh, promised was. Uh, sort of management reports, and I don't think those ever really materialized. Um, so if you go out to bid, I would put um, highly, uh, high on the list the management reports that they're able to put out. Mm -hmm. you, you, I think we all agree that the UMIS accounting system is uh, uh, sort of archaic and not really very useful. I'm going to adjourn the Hadley Media yeah. meeting oh, if we're going to, because uh, yeah. we're on tape.